The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Second chapter, text number 18. Given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded on August 24, 1973, in London, England. Only the material body of the indestructible, immeasurable, and eternal living entity is subject to destruction. Therefore, fight, O descendant of Bharata. Antavantaini deha Nittasya Tasari Sari Rina This is Pura Brahma Sari Rin So Sari Rin or Sari Ri means the proprietor of the Sari or body. Sharir means his body, and Sharirin, one who possesses the body. So, Puranama is Sharirin. In a variety of ways, Krishna is convincing Arjuna that the soul is different from this body. So, this body, Antavas, is really finished. However, you may try, uh, so scientifically, applying cosmetic and other things, uh, you cannot save the body. That is not possible. Antavas. Antavas means, Antavas means end. And bot means possession. <coughs> so you have got your duty to fight, and you are lamenting that the body of your grandfather or teacher or kinsman they will be destroyed, and you will be unhappy. That's all right, you'll be unhappy. But even if you do not fight, uh, their body will be finished today or tomorrow or say a few years after. So why should you go back from discharging your duty? This is the point. And so far the soul is concerned of your grandfather, teacher, and others. Uh, they are nitya, nitya, already explained. Nitya sa Now, Krishna here also says, ukta. Ukta means it is said. Not that dogmatically I am speaking. I am putting up some theory. No. It is said. It is already settled, it is already asserted. And in the Vedic literature, by authorities, it is so said. This is the way of presenting, evidence. Even Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God, uh, he does not theorize. Uh, he said it is said, authorized. Uh, <coughs> O nāsīna aprameya O nāsīna. Nāsīna means distractive. And O nāsīna means not distractive. Sarīrīna, the soul. O nāsīna. It will never be destroyed. And aprameya sa. Aprameya sa immeasurable. It cannot be measured out. In the Vedic literature, the measurement is described there, but you cannot measure it. Anything, so many things are described in the Vedic literature. Uh, so you are so advanced in scientific knowledge, uh, but 
neither you can say that it is not fact, uh, neither you can estimate. Just like in the Padma Pura, the varieties of living entities are ex, uh, expressed. Jalajanamalakhani, the aquatic animals or living entities are nine hundred thousand. So you cannot say, no, it is not nine hundred thousand, it is less or more. Uh, it is not possible for you to uh, see within the water how many varieties of you might have the biologist, the might have experimented, but it is not possible to uh, see nine hundred thousand forms. That is not possible. Jalajanamalakani, Havra Lakhavinsa. So that trees and plants, the two million varieties. Savara Lakhavinsa. Krivaya Rudra Sankaka and the insects, they are uh, eleven hundred thousand. So it is a puzzling thing that how Vedic literature uh, places everything very correctly. Uh, nine thousand, nine hundred thousand, eleven hundred thousand, two million. Uh, as they are. This is called realization. So we take it for granted. Our facility is because we accept the Vedas as authority, therefore the knowledge is that ready. If somebody asks me or you, uh, can you say how many forms of living entities as they are within the water. It is very difficult. Even the biologist cannot say. Uh, although they are very expert. I cannot say. But our facilities, we can immediately say. There are nine hundred thousand. Although I have never experimented, neither seen personally. But because it is explained in the Vedic literature, I can say you correct. Therefore, in the Vedanta Sutra, it is said that you want to see or perceive directly anything. Just like so many rascal come, they challenge. Can you show me God? So, uh, <coughs> yes, we can show you God, provided you have got the eyes. God can be seen by different type of eyes, not these eyes. That is stated in the Shastra. Atha, Sri Krishna Namadi, Navavet. Gayam Indriya. Indriya means the senses, the material senses. With these material senses, we cannot experience directly uh, what is the form of the Lord, what is his quality, what does he do, so many things you want to know about this thing. But Shastra describes the qualities of the Lord, the form of the Lord, the activities of the Lord. You can learn. Shastra Jyoni, Pyat. Jyoni means soul. Soul, Shastra Jyoni. Shastra Chokhushyat. Your eyes should be this Shastra. Not this blunt type. Everything we also experience by uh, Shastra, by book. So, 
we have to see through the authorized book with the scripture, uh, which is beyond our perception. Achinta Phuluji Bhava, not as Tarkena Juja, Tarkena by argument, which is uh, beyond your sense perception. So many things. Uh, even we uh, see daily so many planets, stars in the sky. But we have no information. Uh, they are going directly to see the moon planet, but hopelessly coming back. It is very doubtful to say. And they have got a dogmatic impression. Except this planet, in other planets, so many, uh, there is no life. These are not perfect understanding. Uh, oh, from Shastra Yoni, if you want to see through the Shastra, that's a moon planet. We have got an information from Srimad Bhagavatam that there the people, they live for ten thousands of years. And what is that measurement of year? Our six months equal to their one day. Now, such ten thousand of years, this means. It is called Gaiva Bars. Gaiva Bars means year according to the <coughs> demigods calculation. Just like Brahma's day, that is, demigod calculation. Sahasya bhujyuga parjantam arahad jad brahmano vidu. We have got information from Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says that uh, the calculate the years of the demigod. Everyone's year is calculated. This is called and this is accepted by the modern science. Relative truth of the law of relative. A small ant, uh, he has got also hundred years age. But the ant's hundred years and our hundred years different. This is called relative. According to your size of body, uh, everything uh, in relationship, our hundred years and Brahma's hundred years, that is defined. Therefore, Krishna says, calculate like this. Kasa Yuga Pajantam or Hajjad Brahmano Vidu. Now, to try to understand what is the age of Brahma by calculating one day, your Sahasra Yuga. We have got four yugas, Sattva, Sreta, Dapar, Kali. These are called four. This calculation is forty-three uh, hundred thousand of you. That is the sum total of the four yugas. Uh, Eighteen, twelve, eight and four. How many sons? Eighteen and twelve? Thirty, and then eight, at the eight, then four. This is rough calculation. Forty-two, forty-three. Then Sahasra Yuga Parjantam. So, so many years, Sahasra Yuga Parjantam, or Hap, or Hap means day. Sahasra Yuga Parjantam, or Hap Jat Brahmano Vidu. This is the uh, one day of Brahma. One day means morning to evening. Uh, Forty-three hundred thousand of years, your calculation. <coughs> Therefore, these things are to be understood through this hashtag. Uh, otherwise, you have no knowledge. 
He cannot calculate. He cannot go to Brahma. He cannot go into the moon planet. And what to speak of? Brahma Lok is the ultimate, uh, the remotest part of this universe. So, by your direct experience, you cannot calculate. And neither you can go. They estimate the modern aeronautics. They estimate that in order to go to the topmost planet, uh, we require forty thousands of years by going in the light year. That is just like light year we have got calculated. So <coughs> we cannot estimate by direct perception, even in this material world. And what to speak of the spiritual world? Not Pantas Koti Satavasta Sampradamma. Bayu Rathapi Manasu Manipungavana. My mental manipunga means mental speculation. You can go on mental speculating. But if you do, even for many hundreds and thousands of years, it is not possible to calculate. You have to access this truth through the Shastra, otherwise it is not possible. Therefore Krishna says, Nitya Sokta Sari Ukta. Ukta means it is said. Not that I am presenting some dogma, although he can do so, he is thinking personally. This is the method. Unless there is Ukta, said by authorities, previous authorities, Acharya, you cannot say anything. This is called parampara. You try to understand with your intelligence, but you cannot make any addition or alteration. That is not possible. That is called nitya sokta. It is said. It is already settled. You cannot argue. Nitya sokta sari na anasina aparamesa immedal. Now, this soul, as in the previous verse we have understood, avinasi tutadiviti dinu sarvam idam tapam. This is not measurement of the soul, but the power of the soul. You can measure, uh, but not the soul. It is not possible. So it is so small that it is not possible. You have no measuring means, and in, because now our material senses, it is not possible. <coughs> you can simply understand by consciousness. Uh, just like when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu fainted in the Jagannath temple, Sarva Bhattacharya examined that there was no consciousness. Uh, even the abdomen was not moving. When you actually you have consciousness and you breathe, the, uh, the abdomen moves. Uh, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's abdomen was tested by Sadhuma Bhattacharya, it was also not moving. So he thought that this sannyasi might have died. Uh, but he again tried. He brought a little cotton swab and put before his nostril. And when he saw the swab, the fiber, a little moving, then he became hopeful. Yes. Uh, <coughs> so everything has got uh, a, a different type of calculation, measurement, but so far the soul is concerned, it is said here, apramaya, so there is no soul from the world. There is no soul. Uh, therefore, the so-called materialist science, they say there is no soul. No, there is soul. This is the proof, there is soul. This is the proof. What is that proof? First of all, there is concept. Uh, this is the proof. But you cannot measure. The place is also located. Uh, the soul is there in the heart. Ishara Sarvabhuta Namri Desha Arjuna So, the soul is in the heart and Krishna is also in the heart because they remain both together. The place is also located. 
you can perceive also by consciousness that there is presentation of soul. Uh, but if you want to measure by experiment, that is not possible. Therefore it is called uh, aprameya. Uh, prameya means direct perception. I can see or I can touch, I can handle. Uh, <coughs> so that is, Krishna says, no, it is not possible. Aprameya. Then how I shall accept that Krishna says, so, how I can believe Krishna? Krishna says, Ukta. It is already settled by authority Ukta. This is Parampara. Krishna also says this. Krishna uh, does not say that I speak. No. Ukta. There is Vedic evidence. Where it is? In the Upanishads, there is just like Balagra Sadhavagasya. Sadhādhā-kulpita-sasa, bhāga-jīva-sabhīgyīva, sacha-anantāya-kalpita. It is in the Upanishad. Sītā-sakara-upanishad. This is called Vedi-jīva evidence. Ah. And another, in the Śrīmad-bhāgavata, there is evidence. What is that? Kesābra-sadhā-gasya-sakadhā. Ah. Sadhisham. Jiva, Sukhma, Sukhma, very fine. Jiva, Sukhma, Sarupa, I am uh, Asankhaya. Perfect. This Jiva, not one, two, three, four, you cannot calculate. Asankhaya. So these are evidences in the Vedic literature. So you have to access it. Krishna confirms it. Uh, and actually also you cannot measure, but we get evidence, the presence of the soul, presence of the soul. Still, how we can say there is no soul? No. This is foolishness. The whole world is going on under this foolishness. Not only now, uh, before all, like Sarvatma, uh, he was atheist, he did not believe. Lord Buddha also uh, said like that, but he cheated. Uh, he knew everything because he is incarnation of God. But he had to cheat the people in that way uh, because they are not intelligent. Why not intelligent? Because they were killers of animals. They lost their intelligence. Case of Adhita, Buddha Sariya, Jaya Jagadi Sahari. Those were animal killers. Their brain is dull as stone. They cannot understand it. Therefore, meat eating should be stopped. Uh, in order to revive the finer tissues of the brain to understand subtle things, one must give up meat eating. Uh, uh, <coughs> it is a statement of uh, The king, uh, what is it? Uh, not the district. Uh, Parikhir Maharaj, he said that God consciousness, Krishna consciousness, cannot be understood by the animal kids. Vinapasuri, Nidvita Tarsai Rupavi Yama. In fine, those are animal killers. Uh, the so-called Christians and uh, Mahabharatans, they cannot understand. Uh, they are simply fanatic. Cannot understand what is soul, uh, what is God. They have got some theories and they are thinking we are religious. Uh, what is seen, what is pious activities, these things are not understood by them because they are animals here. Uh, it is not possible. Mm. Therefore, Lord Buddha propagated ahimsa. Ahimsa. Because he saw the whole human race is going to hell by this animal killing. Let me stop them so that they may 
in future they may become soba. Sadaya, ridaya, darushita, two sides. First of all, you are very much compassionate. The poor animals, they are being killed. And another side, he saw the whole human race is going to hell. So let me do something. Therefore, he had to deny the existence of the soul because their brain will not tolerate such things. That's why he did not say anything about the soul or God. He said that you stop animal killing. If I pinch you, you feel pain. So why should you give pain to others? Never mind, he has no soul. That's all right. He did not talk anything about soul. So these people say the animals have no soul. But that's all right. But he is feeling pain when you are killing the animal. So you also feel pain. So why should you give pain to others? That is Lord Buddha's theory. Sadaya ridaya dar sita pasu ghatam. Nimna si jagda vidhi raha hasuti jatam. I don't accept Veda. Because in Veda there is some kind of recommendation, not for killing, but for giving rejuvenation to that animal. But killing in that sense is there uh, for sacrifice. So the, but Lord Buddha did not accept it in uh, animal killing in sacrifice. Therefore, nindas, nindas means you are criticizing. Nindas is yogya vidhe raha hasta ki Sadaya ridaya darsh. Why? You are so kind and compassionate. Uh, that is Krishna Kāsa. Uh, God is very kind, very compassionate. Uh, he does not uh, like. But when there is necessity, he can kill. Uh, but his killing and our killing is different. He is all good. Uh, anyone killed by Krishna, he immediately gets salvation. These things are there. So, in Vijayaro, uh, you cannot measure uh, what is the soul, but the soul is there and the body is perishable. If you, if you, even if you do not try, you save the bodies of your grandfather and teacher and others as you are so much overwhelmed. So, they, they are perishable. Antavati, uh, today are tomorrow. Suppose your grandfather is already old, and so you do not kill him just now or say after one year or six months. He may die because he is already old. These are the arguments put forward. The main point is Krishna wants Arjuna that he must fight. He must, he must not deviate from his duty as a Kshatriya. He should not be overwhelmed by the uh, bodily destruction. Uh, therefore, he is giving instruction. The body is different from the soul, so don't think that the soul will be killed. Uh, you stand up and fight. It is instruction. Thank you.